Well, good morning, Temple Baptist Church. Good morning. Our friends on Facebook. Good, good to see you this morning. God is good. And some glad morning, we're going to fly away. Stand with me if you would. That's the song this morning. We're going to get your blood pumping a little bit. I'll fly away. Hold on. There we go. Some glad morning when this life is over. run and spread my arms no. man I was like you know I was like the greatest hovercraft <laughs> and I would look down and wow there's my house down there did you try it did I try it oh I, I'm sure I pretended you know oh you have to yeah but it, you know you but boy one day that's gonna really happen yeah I'm gonna fly away yep and I don't think I'm gonna be looking down so much as I'm gonna be looking up yeah Amen. I want to be looking up for and we won't even care about what's down here anymore. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. We get so tangled up in everything down here, and one day we're not even going to... It's going to almost be a race from our mind, I think. It will be, because you... I mean, why would you even want to bother when you're with the Savior in heaven in a perfect place? Mm -hmm. You're going to see your mansion. It might be on a hilltop. Man, that's going to be something. Yeah, no. Think about that. You want a farm? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good day. Good day. Okay. Well, God wants to give you the desires of your heart, so <laughs> we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see. If you have a farm, I'm going to come see you. Okay. That's okay. right. All right. Let's uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time when we can gather together with God's people, both here in person and those that are on Facebook. We pray, Lord, that you challenge us today, and uh, Lord, that uh, we would be, Lord, encouraged, Lord, in the days that we live in. We know that we are the hope, Lord, of, of uh, witnessing, Lord, and, and, Lord, that you've called us for a purpose, Lord, for such a time as this, asking that you would uh, meet, Lord, our needs, Lord, as Christians, and help us to be, Lord, testimonies everywhere we go, light, little lighthouses, Lord, that might make a difference in the world we live in. Please, Lord, to bless this time now. Take over everything that's said and done. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. It's nice to have Russ visiting with us today from, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of that church. Brother Staub is the pastor. Silvery Lane. Silvery Lane. Nice to have you. I know some people down there. 
at that church. So it's nice Amen. to have you with us today. Uh, he came down because he is familiar with our Christmas programs that we have and came down asking about it. So we'll, uh, as of right now, we're not going to be able to do that because yeah. of COVID, but um, a lot of people have asked and we appreciate those that are on Facebook and those that have uh, followed the, our church and Master's Promise all, all these years. But uh, this year, due to all the requirements, uh, that's not going to happen. But uh, God is good. Amen. And, uh, we've had a lot of joy in those those presentations at Christmas. I, yes. I know that's my favorite time of the year. I'm going to miss it this year. Mm -hmm. I know we all will. But uh, just pray for uh, God's will to be done and that, that we'd be back next year celebrating together. At Christmas. That doesn't mean you can't celebrate now, though. Amen. Amen. It's hard to believe this is the end of October. Uh, it's our last Sunday service in October, and then November, and it seems that the year just races by. Yeah. But uh, we'd be in prayer for all those that are prayerless, for those that are have been in the hospital, um, those that are still battling. You, you folks are familiar with all those requests, so please remember them if you would, and uh, especially your pastors. They need our prayers and. Uh, uh, Katie, of course, we know that uh, a lot going on with her, but she's a little trooper. She's an inspiration to so many, so we want to make sure we remember Katie as well. All right? All right. God bless you, Brother David. Well, good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you here. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, don't forget that... Uh, that next weekend is our time change um, so and we do fall back we do go ahead and roll back uh, the clock there and give you that extra hour so plan on doing that mark that down um, so uh, anyway uh, it's glad that we're glad to have everybody here with us today and then, uh, if you would, please, let's uh, take our Bibles and go to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Okay, we're going to begin reading down in verse 23. And we're actually going to uh, read into the next chapter as well, down to verse 23 as well. That's page is sticking together. Here we go. All right. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 23. Sing unto the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation, declare his glory among the heathen. His marvelous works among the nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord all ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth and the world also shall be stable that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let men say among the nations the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice in all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. So he left, therefore, before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord uh, Asaph and uh, his brethren to minister before the Ark continually as every, man, uh, every day's work required. 
and Obed-Edom with their brethren, threescore and eight, Obed-Edom, also the son of Jethun and Hosea, to be uh, porters, and Zadok the priest, and his brethren, the priests before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place, that was at Gibeon, to, burnt, uh, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually, morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them, uh, Heman and uh, Jedathan, Jedathan and uh, the rest that were chosen who were expressed by name to give thanks to the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. And with them, Heman and Jedathan with the trumpets and cymbals for those that should make a sound and with, and with musical instruments of God and the sons of Jedathan were porters. And all the people departed every man to his house and David returned to bless his house. Now it came to pass as David sat in his house that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth, remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass that same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build an, me an house to dwell in, for I have not uh, dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all of Israel, who I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me a house of cedars? Now therefore thus shalt thou shalt say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel and will plant them and they shall dwell in their place and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. And since that, the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house, and it shall come to pass when, thou days be, when thy days be expired, expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me in house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, he shall be my son, and I will not take thy mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all this greatness in making known all these things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in earth is like thy people Israel, who, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed 
out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, O Lord, becamest their God. Now, therefore now, o Lord, let the thing thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast said. I know that was a lot of scripture. <laughs> but uh, there are some things um, that we, we should take take note of um, with with David um, in, in the scriptures. Of course, David is known as a man after God's own heart, but we all know that David uh, had some boo-boos as well, uh, as we all do. Um, but I want to, uh, the, the title of the lesson today is actually... <laughs> Walking away from God in bitterness. There's people that, that do that. They get bitter and they, and they just walk away from God over the bitterness. And I, I just felt led to deal with this uh, this morning. And, and we're going to see a, a perfect example of a man who, who suffered wrong uh, and became bitter to his own demise. Um, and a man by the name of Ahithophel. This was a man who harbored hurt in his heart. Uh, and you might say, well, who's that? I, I don't know that I've ever heard of him. Well, who is this man of, 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 of Hithophel? That's hard to say it in Sunday school. <laughs> Try to say that ten times fast. You know, uh, you that have had like probably four cups of coffee could probably do it pretty well. But, you know, and I believe he's often thought of as a wicked man. Uh, or in our terminology, maybe even a lost man, but that's not the Bible's commentary of his life. Um, Ahithophel was a godly man who started out well, but he ended his life in bitterness. It actually drove him to, 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 to die that way. And, and we're going to look at that this morning. And this message is going to be more of a, a longer introduction, and then uh, the, the, the points will just come real fast. But uh, we're going to look at this guy uh, today. Uh, also, down here, in uh, you can see in 1 Chronicles 27, 33, that he was a man of great wisdom because he was the king's counselor. He was the king's counselor. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go over here. That's that's what it says. He was a man of the king's counselor. In uh, 27, and the first part of 33, it says Ahithophel was the king's counselor. And so we, we see that that's exactly what he was. Proverbs 20, verse 18 says, Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war so when we have when we have that before you go to war you definitely want to have good advice amen you don't want to go go to war ill-advised and and go in not knowing something or not knowing all the facts or not having all the story and just charging uh and charging in there uh to try to try to do something but it should be established by good counsel not all counsel is good counsel by the way uh, you know, and the Bible teaches us not to not to be in the counsel of the ungodly, and and so we don't want to have that. We want to be in a place. We want to be in a place where we're in good godly counsel, seeking out Christian counseling that can give you more direct Bible effort. See, counselors will just look at something and try to like secular counselors. You know, they want to look at the, the, you know, how this person's feeling, how this person's feeling, and just find a way to get them to compromise so that both people can be happy. They're not there to say, oh, you're wrong and you're wrong. You'll never find that in, a, in that. It's, you know, they're going to blame your parents. They're going to blame somebody else for why you are the way you are. And the choices that we make, that that's what they do. But see, here's the difference in biblical counseling. Biblical counseling will let you see what God says about how we're acting. Is it right? If, 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 if you do not well, like when he told Cain, if you do not well, would you not be accepted? But if not, then sin lieth at the door. See, God gets down to the heart to change the person. 
Because we're all human, and what we need to realize is that we all have, and I'm not saying that, that the, the way you came up doesn't have anything to do with it. Obviously it does. But see, once, once you are raised up and you're out on your own, how, how much more can we say that what, what I grew up in is my problem? We now can make choices for ourselves. We now can make uh, determinations for ourselves that I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to do this. I'm going to seek out the right thing. Godly counsel, right? So that's who this guy was. He would, he would give good counsel. Uh, he was a man that could be trusted. 2 Samuel 16, 23, and the, and the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both David and both with David and with Absalom. So I mean, he was a counselor to both David and Absalom. And this guy, according to the Bible, gave really good counsel. All right? So we're, we're starting to say, well, man, you know, how would you think of somebody walking away from God in bitterness? Well, where did this guy trip up, you know? Where did he go wrong? He seems like he's on the right track here. Seems like we ought to, we ought to have more of this uh, in our mind. Uh, but he was a, a dear friend, actually, of King David. And Psalm 41, 9, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. He said, mine own. He was someone very personal, a very personal friend, and very, very familiar uh, with David. He was a very, very familiar with him. Uh, and so, you know, he was allowed into David's personal life. He was, he was allowed to come in. He was allowed to eat at the table and hang out and chill out, as we like to say. Uh, he, was, he was kind of invited into that family circle. And now we're seeing that there's something wrong. But in Psalm chapter 55, verse 12 through 14, uh, the Bible says, For it was not an enemy, and just... Uh, just as a, a little side note there, he was David's friend that reproached me. Then could I have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me because David loved him. There, there was a love there of those, those two that did, that did magnify himself against me. Then would I have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God and company. See, Ahithophel loved God. He loved David. They were closely knit together. They were, they were good, good companions. They were on the right road. You know, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? They were in agreement at this particular time. But now, you know, David said, man, it's not an enemy that did this. It's not somebody that hated me, but it was someone that was right that it was right in my family circle. It was someone that, that I allowed to come in, someone that I allowed to get close. And, and now this, this, this betrayal is happening. This old guy has come against him. So what caused him to turn against his own familiar king, friend the king? What caused such hatred and intended harm? What caused him to destroy his own life. Well, uh, Ahithophel was, uh, was actually Bathsheba's grandfather. He was Bathsheba's grandfather. Now, Bathsheba speaking of uh, David's sin, right? He saw her bathing and said he was not where he should have been. He saw her and then he knew that one of his mighty men, that was the wife of one of his mighty men, Uriah, and he sent him to the hottest part of the battle to, to make sure that he would die, and he died, and uh, and, and so and then he then he took her for himself. See, so um, and, and you find that back in Samuel chapter Second uh, Samuel chapter eleven, he was uh, he was a victim in the matter of King David sin with Bathsheba against Uriah. So 2 Samuel 11:3 and David sent and inquired after the woman 
And one said, Is this not or is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And then and over in um Second Samuel twenty three thirty four Eliphet, the son of Abishai, the son of Machadite, uh, Elim, the son of Ahithophel, the Gilanite. So the, the, she was right in that. Uh, she was right into that. Dave, King David could have had probably any any single woman in the kingdom as a wife. He stole the wife of one of his mighty men, Uriah the Hittite. This also was a man that was close to the king. He was one of the mighty men. David has been on the battle and warred with Uriah right and right beside him. Knew that, I mean, just was a familiar uh, presence there uh, and, and, and was also very close. And King David, instead of confessing his sin, sought to cover it by using Uriah's flesh against him. Uriah's desire to be with his beautiful wife, even causing Uriah to get drunk, couldn't undermine the integrity, his integrity. So he sent a letter to Joab by the hand of Uriah that placed Uriah in the hottest place of battle and uh, retiring him so that he would die. So somehow uh, uh, Ahithophel became uh, aware of these wicked acts committed by King David and the hurt and anger and bitterness turned into wrath. From that day, he hated him. It turned to that. It, 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 he, he couldn't stand him anymore. But he continued to be David's counselor without David knowing that he was upset with him. So that ought to tell you something right there. He was a little two-faced to be able to be counselor to somebody that he couldn't stand. But he was in a place of position, right? When Absalom came into power, King David had to flee for his life. Uh, this Ahithophel remained in the, uh, the palace as Absalom's counselor. And when the time was right, he tried to kill the king. Uh, when the council was, his counsel was rejected, he went home. He put his house in order and he hanged himself. That's what the Bible tells us about him. So he went back and it caused him to do that. So the king had sinned against God, Bathsheba, Uriah, Joab, Ahithophel, and Israel. The king got it right with God, but Ahithophel never got over it. He never got over. He became hurt, angry, and bitter against uh, against God's man. Now you, we all know that we're all we're all capable of anything. Well, you know, and, and I know that David gets a lot of uh, you know. Well, you should have. Well, any of us can look back at everything in our life and say, I should have, right? There's little boo-boos. There's big boo-boos. We've had, a, there's been a lot of boo-boos, folks. There's not enough band-aids to cover our boo-boos, <coughs> right? So, I mean, but we all, we all get to that, you know, you think about this and you read these things through the scriptures and then you're like, man, he just should have done this. Why couldn't he have just done that? You've got the advantage of seeing it before you and making that and making that and having the, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, say, yep, that's what it should have been. It's a lot harder to look at our own lives and look at our own situations and, and apply that same thing because not all of it is out before us. See, the Bible gives us the whole story. It gives us the whole beginning, the middle and the end. It gives us all the pertinent things that we can use to make uh, decisions, Right. So, but he never got over it. It destroyed his life. There's uh, two things that, uh, there's only two things that should divide us from the local church. You know, and you can talk about that. People get hurt and they get bitter over little tiny things and then they leave and they do different things. It's the story of all stories throughout time. I mean, somebody didn't like this person or somebody said something they didn't like and they got offended, they got hurt. And instead of coming together and dealing with it, getting over it, getting uh, getting by, they just went off on their own ways, all both hurt, and one maybe forgot all about it, and the other never gets over it. And then, you know, there's there's all that. But there's really only two major, there's only two reasons that should divide us from the local church. And number one is major doctrinal error. If there are major doctrinal issues that are not preaching the word of God, they are not, there are doctrinal problems that are there that are not being dealt with. 
And, and I would say that if you guys, uh, I don't, you guys don't have to worry about that with us here, but, um, but you know, if there was a doctrinal issue, then don't just get mad and go. Come and talk, let's talk about it, right? If I, if I had said something, maybe I was off that day and I said something I shouldn't have said or there was a, I miscommunicated something, you can come to me and say, you know, what did you mean by this? And then I go, oh man, now if I realize that I've done something, I'm going to get right out there the very next opportunity I can and I'm going to explain, explain it and apologize for it and get myself back on track because you know what if you're not careful when you read the scripture it is easy it can be very easy to 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 you know not to, to go off doctrinally because of something that you saw uh there were there was times early on in my in my in my ministry that i would bring something that's why i've always been glad to have my dad as my pastor because I've, I've been like, oh, well, I got an idea for a sermon. Well, what about this and what about that? And this says this and that says that. And, and, and he's like, oh, wait, though. <laughs> Hang on. That's not what you want to say here because these scriptures, a mile long worth of scriptures, you know, you're going to end up, you got to be careful with that. Well, you, you could take something, even though it seems exciting. And, and it can go off into another way and get you off doctrinally. So it was good to have that grounding early on. So now that I'm, I, I, and after that lesson, I've, very, uh, I've studied before. I, when I found something to get excited about, I also go through the scriptures to find other things that, that also bring light to that, to that fact. So that I can stay doctrinally pure. But that would be one major thing. In Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And avoid them. Now, if you were in a situation where there was a doctrinal issue. And it was not going to be resolved. And, the, and it was going to continue. That would, be a, that would be worthy of having a separation from that assembly. Right? Also, open, unrebuked sin is another one. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 and 2, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. And now in Hebrews 12, 15, it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So I want to talk a little bit now uh, in the time we've got left about bitterness because it really is, it really is a thing. And even more so now, uh, there's people that are bitter some people are mad at the people that are wearing masks. Some people are mad and bitter over the ones that aren't. Uh, and that's only one little, one little tiny uh, thing, drop in the bucket of things that people could be upset and bitter over. People are just f flat out bitter as it is. If you look at the way, just the overall way people are anymore, it just seems like people walk around with this kind of stuff. So it's good that we throw these things out, that we can kind of use them as a tool to purify ourselves of these things, that they not take root and we end up and, and, and you know, we end up not ending well, right? We want to end well. You don't want to just finish your course and cut it short. You don't cut the short, short, the course short. You don't just keep, just stop. You gotta, you, if we're gonna stop something, let's stop the, let's stop all the stuff that we should have stopped. Let's stop the bitterness. Let's stop the hatred. Let's stop the malice. Let's stop the envy. Let's stop the strife. Let's stop all the other things that are causing these issues and we'll be off. So if you're going to stop something, stop that. Stop the whining. And we could go on for, uh, for years probably about things that we should stop. But the ministry is not one of them. Working for God is not one of them. Being a Christian is not one of them. Don't, don't stop all the good stuff and then dive into the stuff that you know you shouldn't be into in the first place. 
The causes of bitterness can be varied, so I, I, I would not try to enumerate all of them. But I want you, I'm going to say something, and you're not, I don't know, some of you may agree with it, some of you may not. But I'm going to just gonna throw this out here, and we're going we're gonna to talk about it, okay, just for a few minutes. But I believe that bitterness is a self-inflicted wound. You are the one that chooses to be bitter. It is a self-inflicted wound. People can be carnal and care nothing for the feelings of others. When people legitimately hurt you, you need to realize that you can hurt yourself by not handling it right. You can hurt yourself worse than that uh, there was a preacher that he uh, they, they got offended at something and uh, and he just he got offended at this guy over something <laughs> never went to him never talked to him about it but just it just kept growing and growing and growing and all the all the bitterness just kept growing and growing and the next thing you know he he started skipping church he started skipping church he stopped praying he said I couldn't even pray to God I couldn't pray at all I was so bitter. And he's finally got to the place. It went far enough after he couldn't even communicate with God, couldn't go to church. He, he was miserable. And he finally knew. He finally had some glimmer of light shined in a place where he was and, and said, you know what? This is not where I want to be. How did I get here? I, I got here because I just didn't deal with it. You know what? I need to go make this right with this person. I need to, I need to tell them about this they, they went over there and uh he he, he had, they went over to the they knew they were friends they knew he knew where he lived he knocked on the door they they, they, they greeted him hey how are you come on in have a piece of pie let's sit down and he realized at that conversation he explained what was going on and what what had hurt him and that in the terrible place that he was at now, I, I can't go to church. I can't pray. I just, I, I need this to be made right. And I'm sorry. I realize that I'm the one that's at fault here. And I need this to be made right. I need you to forgive me. He said, and the person had no clue. They had absolutely no clue what, what, what this was all about. No clue at all. But then they made it right. He, they, he got for forgiveness. He got it made right. He got it clear. And he was able to pray. He went to church. And he got himself back to his spiritual line where he needed to be. So a lot of times when you're thinking about this wrong, you're thinking about this hurt, you're thinking that they're stewing as much as you are. And it's like a competition to see who can stew harder. Right? That, that's how we act. We act like we need to stew about it because we think about them stewing and it makes us hard, it makes us madder about it. So then we get mad. And this person could not even know what you're mad about because you didn't even bother to bring it up. You didn't even bother to bring it up. And you know, there was the, you know, there's been there's been times where uh where I was joking with somebody and and uh, and then I realized later that it could have been something that, that they could have taken wrong. And then I went to that person. As a matter of fact, I did that with, uh, with Brother Kale one time. Uh, I, we were joking because, you know, he was always joking at me. And, you know, you know it, it, he taught me so many things. He really did. I, I loved him so much. And uh, I remember I was not on my game at all one Sunday and uh, and uh, him and you know you, you got you got pros like Mr. Hipsley and, and Grover. He was a pro. He was a pro man. They could get you. Uh, it, it was always in love, but they could man they could get you. So you 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 always had to you always had to have something you know, have something ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I came in. I wasn't ready. I tried to do something, and <laughs> I would never ever forget it. He looked at me. And he kind of threw one eyebrow up, and he's like, he's like, I want to tell you something, son. And he, and he paused for a moment. You always have to have that pause because then it, it creates that drama and pulls you in a little bit. He's like, 
never come to a war of wit unarmed. <laughs> but uh, we were always laughing and joking. Well, I, I thought I got him really good one day. But then later on, I felt bad because I said it. I'm thinking, man, he's my elder. I shouldn't have said that. I, you know, I, I, I feel bad. I don't want him to hurt. I wouldn't hurt him for the world. So I got with him. Uh, I got with him that night. And I pulled him aside. I said, Brother Grover, I said, the, what I said this morning, you know, I, I feel bad about saying that. Uh, as, and, you know, I said, I just didn't want you to be offended or hurt by it because it's the last thing in the world I would ever want to do is is to hurt you, you know. And, and he said, oh, no. And he said, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but, he said, but he did say this. He said, I do appreciate you coming to me in case that could have been something. But he said, that's a good thing. To, he said, that's always a good thing to do. But yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had to kind of pull it back. I had to kind of pull it back a little bit. But you never know who could be hurt. And it's and it's not even maybe the thing you said. It's just the what led up to the moment that you said it. Um, I, I just feel like I should throw that, throw that out there because someone could just be having a rotted week. They come in and they're just, they're, they, they're drained. They need, they need to be encouraged and, and all of that. And just the wrong thing said, you know, even if it's the littlest tiny thing, it could be said and, and it's just what led up to that. It's not that that was the problem. It's just that that was the, the, like the straw, they say the straw that broke the camel's back. That was just the one thing that they couldn't, they couldn't handle. Uh, so you got to be careful about that. But people can falsely perceive that they are also being hurt by others. There's a way, uh, there's always the possibility of you reading them wrong. That happens a lot. Not everyone can speak a word fitly spoken. They intend no harm, but they say something the wrong way. You know, always give somebody the benefit of the doubt and realizing that people have had bad days or tongue problems even at times. You know, that is, that is, uh, it boasteth a lot of things, amen. It says, you know, sometimes, that's why we, we sometimes will speak without really thinking about what we're saying. Um, that was one thing that I always appreciated uh, because my wife and I, uh, back when we were kind of getting to know each other, we're two and a half hours apart, so we pretty we were pretty much just doing Yahoo chat. So I was able to see my words before I hit send. That was a benefit. <laughs> and I cannot tell you the times I, I, I typed something out and then I, I, I read it, and then I thought, you know what? No, I, let's say something different. <laughs> so I backed it up and then I, I, I said something else, and then that, that was good, and I sent it off. Just because I didn't want something to be miscommunicated. But I had the benefit of that in a chat because I could see my words. Boy, God, would to God we had that ability before we opened our mouths. Amen. If we could see what we could say, when you read what you've said or what you're about to say before you say it, then you can see how it can possibly be perceived. Could somebody take what I'm going to say wrong? And then you have the chance to delete that before they hear it. it it's kind of like one of those. People also can overreact to actions or words of others. One piece of advice uh, given to me by a pastor many years ago was to minimize things. Never making a mountain out of a molehill. Just minimize it. Don't 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 blow it up right away just try to keep it down so the causes of business can be buried but the consequences of bitterness can both uh, have both personal and collateral damage springing up right bitterness springs up from the root of hurt and anger you got to kill the root before it becomes a tree you know, they will trouble you. Personal damage comes when it troubles you. We've got enough trouble in this world without causing our own. Uh, troubles, uh, it troubles you because you don't deal with it. It troubles you because you <laughs> meditate on it. 
Many are uh, defiled because of it. Collateral damage is when your, biz your bitterness affects those around you. And this has been, this statement has been uh, attributed to Dr. D.O. Moody. The one sin that is keeping revival from coming to church, more people from being, and more of the blessings of God from coming up, uh, coming upon his people, is the sin of an unforgiving spirit. It's, it's stopping revival. It's stopping things that can take you to another level. Um, but let's talk about the cure of bitterness real quick. Nothing is profound or unreasonable. I just want to look at two of the problem sources. Bitterness generally boils down to carnality and unforgiveness. Right? So you have spirituality versus carnality. Psalm 119, 165, great peace. Have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Then you have forgiveness versus unforgiveness. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake, uh, for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Bitterness will destroy your life along with the lives of of those uh, around you and closest to you to be bitter or not to be bitter is up to you uh, throughout the trials of this life we make choices to become better or bitter so th that's our choice right you can't help what somebody does to you what they say to you all you can do is choose how you're going to respond to it is this something that you want to spiritually die over? Is this something that you want you to ruin your relationship with God? I hope not. Don't choose that route. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the, the word of God, Lord. I, I hope it's been a help and a blessing to somebody today. I hope that someone will be able to take the things that they've learned this morning and to, uh, to put them in their lives, Lord, that would... Help us all to not have to choose that route of bitterness over things, Lord, but that we would be forgiving and understanding and that, Lord, if, we, if we're not sure of an intention, Lord, we have the ability to clarify the intention. Help us to have sense, Lord. We need it. I pray you bless the service to come. Be with everything that's said and done. May it honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us this morning.